So I was walking through the woods the other day and I found an old pot or pan that was sitting in a creek all corroded and nasty. And I took the time, I cleaned it up and got it all nice and shiny. And I thought this would be the perfect little skillet to cook some fish in or just take to the camp and test out. And I got an itch to go fishing, so we are heading to the lake to try these things out and do a little tent camping. And today's video is gonna be sponsored by AG1. AG1, we're gonna mix them up right now. Guys, I love this stuff. Uh, I drink it when I'm at home, but I especially love it when I am on the road because I don't always get the opportunity to get all the best nutrition that I need. This, this just gives it to me. I'm getting all my vitamins, minerals, uh, whole food sourced, natural ingredients, and also good bacteria for my gut. It is the perfect once a day nutritional supplement that just makes you feel great. Tastes good. It doesn't have a, a super sweet taste, but you can also taste the minerals. Shake it up a little bit, about 12 ounces of water, and you're good to go. Drink this baby down. I highly recommend making AG1 part of your daily nutritional routine. So go check them out, uh, drinkag1.com. The link is down in the description. And if you order right now, you get five free travel packs and you also get a bottle of this. This is the AG Vitamin D3 plus K2. And I take this just about every day as well, especially on the road though. Put a drop under the tongue. Vitamin D3, very important in the winter time. Thank you, AG1, for that delicious part of my breakfast and for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's head out to the lake. Let's get camping. Now this is what I call a campsite, y'all. What an outstanding spot. The water's right here. I have the option to do truck camping. I've, I've set my truck up for that and I like to keep it uh, modular. I like to keep everything in these boxes and bags so that I can just take out. If I wanna sleep in the truck or use it for other things, I can. But I've actually thought about doing a dedicated truck cap shell enclosed just for the dangle and hunting trips and everything like that, but that's a video for another day. I've got a new tent that I, I discovered. I went to a international hunting show called the Sheep Show, and they have tons of hunting gear for uh, basically mountain hunting gear and everything you want to be light because you're carrying everything on your back. So I wanted to try that tent out, and we're also gonna put this baby to test. I didn't bring much food, but what I did bring is a heart from a deer. I've already chopped it up. Just gotta let that thaw out. And this is going to be our dinner if we can't catch any fish. But I do wanna see how this pan holds up. But I found this in a creek by the house and this was literally all green. It was corroded. This is made by Revere. As in like Paul Revere. It says, is that right? 18, 1801? Obviously it wasn't made in 1801, but uh, I think it's a vintage style pan. There's some chips in it from rocks and stuff like that. This is all corroded. This was completely rusted, but I want to see how it does, you know, as a little camp set. Stainless steel pans are not cheap these days. This perfect little backpackable uh, bag right here is my tent. And it's a teepee style tent, which is something that I've never camped in before. I've always had the, uh, the you know, the poles, the carbon fiber poles or the aluminum poles that set up in a, in a little dome style tent. I've never actually used one that's a teepee. This one is made by Argali. I've been looking for a, a teepee style tent that I can make a hot tent out of, which is where you have a stove. It's great for winter camping. I don't actually have the stove. They're sold out of them right now, but I have this section and I have, I have an uh, internal Part of the tent you know that has like a bug net and things like that a little bath bathtub style situation but we're not even gonna use that we're gonna sleep on the ground scorpions rattlesnakes hopefully it's cold enough for them to not be here and i think we got to hit the lake guys there's seagulls 
bopping out here. I see them getting shad right now. Uh, we got striper in here. There's crappie. There's big largemouth bass. My One of my biggest bass I've ever caught has been out of this lake right here. Ideally, I would want to set my tent up like right here. It's the flattest ground. But with our wind, we're going to have some embers from our campfire. And I really don't want to put any holes in my tent. So I'm going to try to get it just off the path of the embers and still have a little bit of flat land right here. There's our stakes. This ground is so hard that I'm having trouble getting my stakes in. So we got our four basic stakes in. This is our pole. This pole is also adjustable, so I can raise it up while I'm in there, make things tighter. If I want to make the base wider, it's adjustable in that way. Now we'll just stake out the rest. We'll see how this works. I'd say a snake could uh, could still crawl up in there with me if it wanted to. I'm not on perfectly flat ground, but uh, yeah, we are in rattlesnake country. Now we're just gonna add our bedroll. We'll pretty much be set. Have a look inside my crib. This is actually a four-person tent, but I think it could comfortably sleep too and then still have some room for a gear. And if you check out my roof, you can see the, the little, there's like a cup up there. It's a reinforced liner that the, the pole goes in. Makes it easy, an easy fit. There's access on both sides. There is our stove jack. And so a stove pipe would go up through that. And I, I can actually just take that out if I want to. I don't even need it right now. Um, you can open that vent, make some airflow. But when I have a stove in here, sit right here, I can cook. I can be entirely inside of here. Just have a nice hot stove, hot tent to sleep in. But I think the weather that we have right now is gonna be perfect. So as long as no critters come in here, We'll have a good night's rest. Something I can tell you I'm already gonna like about this tent is that I can actually not fully stand up, but I can be on my knees at least. Inside of a regular tent, you know, you're just crouched over, over you have to lay down. I at least have some headroom in here where I can stand up and, you know, get dressed. And when it's real cold, I don't have to go out in the elements to put all my gear on. I can do it all inside of here instead of doing like the, the shuffle moves. If you guys tent camp, backpack camp, you know what I'm talking about. Now there's just one more thing we gotta do before we go fishing. And that is get our fire prepped and ready to go as soon as we get in, because I'm gonna be cooking on this fire tonight. From my experience coming in from fishing and not having a fire ready to go, that's like, that delays you like an extra 30 minutes, you're hungry. And uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these coals, so it's gonna take even longer. So I want to go ahead and uh, and get this fire ready to go. So when I come in, I hit a hit a lighter and boom, we don't have to worry about it. And this right here is my magic friend for fires. So I got some of these burlap sacks a few years ago, and I typically typically will keep one in the garage that has just wood scraps. I keep uh, a lot of my bow shavings from making bows in here, stuff that's very good tender. And then also just things I wanna dry out and use for starting fires. And then I can just hang this up. I put some paracord through it. So it makes it a nice little hangable sack. And you know, if it's a little wet and I collect some things when I first get to camp, I can hang this up and then they'll be dry, you know, in a, in a day or two and then I can use them for starting fires. And I went ahead and uh, already just batoned some small pieces of oak, had those drying out ready to go because a lot of my other wood is, is sort of wet from the torrential rains we've had in the last week or so. So I'm gonna take some of this, I'll stack it up, and I'll take some tinder, put it in the middle, have the other uh, fuel logs around the sides, and when I come in, we could light it and be ready to go. First impressions 
on the water, just dumping the boat in. There's something going on here. Water's more stained than usual. And I'm seeing dead bait. Dead bluegill, dead shad. It must have gotten really cold here and they had a fish kill. And this is strange to see in the winter, but there's there's like really small bass and bluegill that are right here. I think they're just coming up to the ramp to get warm. There's even shad right there. Gizzard shad and thread fins. Look at all this. That's never good. And look what we have over here. The infamous white-tailed deer, majestic and beautiful. I've been very fortunate so far the season that every time I take out the crispy collector, and of course I choose wisely, but I get calm days so I can run around a little bit. On a windy day, I'd have to stay up in a creek. There's like dying shadow over the lake. It's kind of weird. So this is definitely the most loaded down that I've ever had the crispy. I've got one crappie pole in here. I've got four bass poles. I've got all the electronics gear. Uh, I brought my crappie catfish bag, crappie baits. I have my big tote right here, which has all my goodies in it. These totes are pretty awesome. Actually, if you guys want to get some of these, uh, these are one of my favorite tackle storage things that we have at, at Guggen Squad. They're just perfect for putting these tackle trays in. And I'm looking for jerky baits right here. Man, look at this. Lots of little dead bluegill. I have not seen a dead bass yet. Hoping something else isn't going on. Look at that dead shad. It'd be so easy to be a fish, predator fish right now. This is fresh. I mean, this is within the last 24 hours this thing's been going on. Oh, that little gill is still alive, guys. Look at him. All right, maybe this is not good for fishing. Maybe you have something going on here in the water that's... Not right. back at camp we got no fish to put in our skillet it was it was a toughie but we do have our deer heart and that's what we're gonna cook and the wind has died down beautifully to make our fire everything is all set up here in a nice Lincoln log pattern I'm just gonna take a couple of these off the top so I can get to the tinder and we're gonna light it up Get in there. <sighs> Something about a smell of a campfire gets me every time. When we get the coals nice and hot, we'll break out the skillet and we'll cook up our deer heart. While that fire's getting hot, I've actually just hooked up the boat to recharge it. I've got, I'm, I'm hooking it up to the Blue Eddy charger. I brought my little 12 volt battery charger, just a little gator clamps. And I'm testing the limits of this. You know, I want it to be 
something that I can take off grid. So having that extra power source is pretty cool. Oh, well, look at that. looks like I've already got a pretty much full charge. We'll just leave it on the trickle charge. And yeah, we're still putting out 64 watts. So we're just topping her off. Okay, we got the skillet over the campfire. It's been burning down a little bit. We're just gonna add some olive oil and we're gonna start putting our potatoes in here. Looks like that oil smoking, that's good. It's just at the perfect little spot right now where it's nice and calm down to cook. So let's add our taters, get them nice and soft, then we'll put our deer heart in there. And the taters go. Oh yeah, that's a good sound. Mix those around a little bit. And we'll put some salt, pepper, garlic on it. Make it nice and tasty. Just gonna add a little bit of SPG here for the win. And I just wanna get these sort of soft. And then when they start getting soft, then I'll add the deer heart. That way everything's cooking evenly at the same time. And I, I don't know what kind of uh, metal elements might be coming off of this pan uh, from sitting in a creek for like decades, who knows? But uh, yeah, looks to be cooking all right. So we'll give you a health update in a couple years. Now that we got some browning on the potatoes, we're gonna take our deer heart right here Lovely, full of delicious minerals, proteins. There you go. Ought to be pretty good and we'll mix that around. Just kind of let that marinate. Zero stickage in our pan. I'm pretty happy with that. So, got our browning on the potatoes. Let's go ahead and add our heart. There's gonna be some blood in it. That's okay. And we'll do a little bit more SPG on the top. That right there, folks, is a protein, mineral-filled, delicious dinner. Oh, just kicked the fire up to level 10. Skillet's already cooled off. We don't even, we don't even need a plate. Just to step it up an extra notch, we're gonna add a little Cholula on here to our potatoes. And I actually like the uh, the minerally taste in the heart. It's kind of nice, lets you know that you're you're getting something good in your body. Break out the uh, the case hobo spoon here, spoon fork knife combo. Well, let's get a taste test. Nice warm skillet on the lap to warm you up. Have a tater first. Perfectly cooked, nothing wrong with that. Excellent flavor. How about this heart though? That is cooked perfectly. It's not too chewy. Very little gaminess. Dare I say that that might be better than a striper or a crappie that I would have caught today. There's something up with the fishing. All these bait fish dying I don't know what it is but we're gonna keep exploring tomorrow so we'll see how we do in the tent tonight um, we'll crawl in here in a second give you guys a look can't really ask for more than calm lake campfire and some good self-harvested protein mm. campfires burning down and this is home for tonight so it's about 10 p.m. We're gonna crawl in the sack here. Stainless steel pan, by the way, did amazing. Like there was zero sticking to it. Didn't get any grittiness or anything like that. So 
Uh, pan worked out great. Beautiful calm night, no rain chances. We're in the 40s, it's beautiful camping weather. So I'm gonna crawl in here and I will see you guys in the AM, let you know how it is. rising in the tent. There I am. Uh, what a way to wake up, man. Just listening to the, the birds and the world come alive. It's awesome. Uh, it's about 7 a.m. So just getting some light outside. I slept great. I slept great in here. We had one thing come around last night. Not really sure what it was. Sniffing hard. But uh, nothing came up in here. There's actually something really cool about this tent that I didn't tell you guys. Um, but it's made out of a different material than normal tents. And when it's dewy outside or you get rain, it doesn't sag. And I've already tested that uh, in the backyard. Um, so normally I'd have like the tent sagging on me and it'd be all cold and, and wet, but not with this one. It's pretty sweet. So let's get outside, let's see what the water's looking like. Birds just going crazy behind us. And it's gonna be a little cloudy, overcast, sunny, similar conditions to yesterday. Not as windy yet. So I'm anxious to get out on the water and try it again. See what's going on with these fish. There's something going on in here. I should have got a bite on a jerk bait yesterday, but we're gonna try to figure it out. It's the mystery in the adventure. It keeps me coming back. So thank you guys for tuning in today to our camping adventure and stay tuned for more fishing and outdoor adventures. Subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. I will see you guys on the next one.